Hey, welcome back. This is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. More Studio One fun for you. Talk about markers today. And when you first open up Studio One, and maybe you're playing around with it, we've got these tracks we recorded in a previous video that are just awesome. Let's take a listen again. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's just mm, such good. <laughs> that's good performance. But you may want to say, okay, so here's verse one. Here's verse two. How do I do it? Uh, you see, for whatever reason, it defaults to tra- the marker track being closed. We talked about these up here in a prior video, but uh, here's the marker track. So the marker track does a couple of things. First, you can, as with most things in Studio One, make it bigger. I lied. It doesn't let you make it bigger. But it does a couple of things. So first of all, you can add in your markers. Now, something to keep in mind, the only markers that come in by default are your start and end markers. Those are helpful. Anytime you go to bounce your song to go listen in your car or play it for a buddy or send it off to win a Grammy, you have to set the start and end markers. And when you first create your song, if you remember, in our Create Song page, we have a song length option. So you can say roughly how long the song is. That doesn't really matter, but just keep in mind, if it defaults to something like 10 minutes, then that means this end marker is going to be way over yonder at 10 minutes. And if you don't move it and you come over here to, and we'll talk about this in a future future video, uh, to export your mix down or bounce, bounce to disc as they call it in Pro Tools, uh, it defaults to between start and end marker as the range. So your, your song will be done at four minutes and then there'll be six minutes of silence because it's exporting all the way to the end marker. So you want to make sure as soon as you record that first pass of a song that you bring this in to the appropriate spot so it's not way out here on the side. So those are two markers that are important. The start marker does not have to be all the way to the left. You can put it wherever the song starts. I like to leave at least two bars. Honestly, it's better to leave maybe four to eight of not of space at the beginning of a session in case you ever want to add something else to the intro. And just have some space there to do that. So you, if you did that, then you want to maybe move your marker over here, your start marker, okay? Um... Now, as far as markers to mark verses and things like that, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, you can add all of these while the song is playing. So you can see the playback little dealy bob is moving forward. Uh, and we can click over here to add a marker. But of course, we're never going to do that, right? The easiest way is to just tap Y. So let's say we want there to be a marker at measure 25 because that's verse 1. Boom. And there it is. Now. A marker that says number two, that maybe that's helpful if you just want to be really lazy about it. I don't. I want to be a little less lazy than that. So you can double click on it and change it. But what's the point? That seems blah blah blah. That doesn't seem terribly helpful. So how do we do that? If you hold down Shift while you insert the marker, so I've got Shift held down now, and I hit Y. Boom! It brings up this window for us to name it. So we'll call this verse one. Now you can see it's right there. We can do it again. Boom, here's chorus one. Boom, here's verse two. And you can do as much or as little as you want. I am sometimes bad about putting markers in place. And it can be annoying because you start to, (laughs) you want to get from one place of the song to the next and you're maybe not as familiar with that particular song. So you end up just dancing around trying to find your spot, which can be really annoying. So it's a lot more fun to have markers in place and it'll save you some time as well. Uh, To get rid of markers, you simply click on them and they highlight. You can barely see it's highlighted in a little bit of green. Press delete and it goes away. You can also click that minus button. Um, The other cool thing about markers and moving around is let's say you've got something like this. You've got verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and bridge, you know, classic Nashville songwriting chorus three. So you've got all these markers. You can click on the marker, obviously, or above the marker to move your your start time there. Uh, but an easy way, and I found this out actually somewhat recently, if you hold down shift and you press, and this is on the Mac, I think it may be the same on the PC, and you press the letters B and the letters N, it jumps between your different markers. So if you put way too many markers, this will be annoying, but if you put them for the main sections of the song, you can be listening over here and say, mm, let me go back to the beginning of that branch. Boom. Let me go back to the chorus. Boom. And it continues to play. So you can do this all in real time, which is, again, one of the strengths of Studio One that people don't use a lot, or, or I personally didn't use a lot at the beginning. But it's super helpful. And the same works. It'll go back to the start uh, marker as well, because that is considered a marker. So I'm flipping between all of them. Super helpful.
So that's the marker track, really simple. Um, you also have this guy here that says, is it based in time base or in bars? That's a little bit like the audio tracks. If we set it to time base, and later on we decide we want to change the tempo, we're like, oops, we forgot to set the tempo. Um, I don't know why you would ever do that, but let's say we changed it to a tempo of 60, all the markers are going to move if they're based on beat. So that may be good. Maybe this is all an electronic production. And when you change the tempo, you want everything in the session to move. In that case, it's great. Otherwise, if you don't want them to move, switch it over to time base. And now I can change the tempo to infinity. It doesn't matter. The markers don't move. Okay. Something to keep in mind. If you see the markers move, undo what you did, come change that and then change the tempo again. You'll be fine. Okay. That's it for me. I'm Joe from homestudiocorner.com. Tune in later for more videos. Bye.